Dili, the capital of Timor-Leste. Fishers lay their nets at the edge of the sediment plume that flows out from the Comoro River. During the wet season, the rains fill the dry riverbed and carry nutrients to the ocean, boosting sardine stocks and offering a lifeline for many people. The sardines make their way from the nets of the fishers to the pots of the consumers through networks of middlemen and vendors who trade in very basic conditions. This intricate arrangement of catching and distributing fish plays out in countless locations as the sun lights up the day over lakes and oceans across the world. In Dili, the distance between fishers and fish markets is short. But in the outer districts, fishers wait for traders to arrive on motorbikes to buy their catch and transport it to markets. The fish is displayed on the side of the road. Without ice and cool boxes, the fish quickly decay in the blasting heat from the rising sun. Fish provides nutritious food and income to hundreds of millions of poor people throughout the developing world. Making improvements to fishing and trading practices to reduce waste and loss and improving rural livelihoods is a key objective for World Fish and its national development partners. People have a range of assets that enable them to live their lives as fishers or as processors or traders of fish. These assets can be built on. This is the starting point of the World Fish Swed Bio Project. In this project, we are working in Timor-Leste and Solomon Islands to strengthen people's own inventive solutions for rural development. Two hours drive west of Dili, in a village called Biaku, a group of women buy sardines from the fishers immediately as they land their catches. The women bring the sardines home and get to work cleaning and scaling the fish and finally prepare it for sale. The cooked sardines are placed in glass jars with locally grown garlic, red onion and peppercorn. The small sardines are eaten whole with bones. This supports micronutrient intake from the minerals in the bones. This is important in a country with some of the highest levels of child malnourishment in the world. Supporting such enterprises provides an excellent opportunity for rural development. The West Are Are Rokotanikeni Association is a large women's organization in Solomon Islands with more than 1,000 members. Members of the association aim to set aside some money in a saving club in order to provide basic necessities for their families. In 2016, World Fish and Roko Tanikeni started a partnership to experiment with local income earning activities. The women wanted to test if solar-powered freezers could improve the marketing opportunities of fish. In 2017, we arranged three solar-powered freezers in three different villages as pilots in the experiment. The groups have targets for how much they need to save to show that they are on a trajectory to replace any machine parts within their expected lifetime. For example, a battery lasts for about five years. Four months into the experiment, two of the groups had saved twice their target amount. The women store the food that they market in the freezer and make incomes from renting out freezer space in the village. Thank you to now, women operate freezers in nine remote villages. More than 300 people have used these freezers, so the activity is of wide benefit. Over half a ton of fish has been stored in the freezers and the committees have earned over 3,000 US dollars in total. In the remote areas of Solomon Islands, that is a considerable amount of money. Governments and their development partners continue to search for better ways to support the small-scale fisheries sector. For a long time, the main emphasis has been to modernize fishing and trading practice by building fishery centers to deliver cold storage and help facilitate trade. This has occurred in both Solomon Islands 
and Timor-Leste. But they commonly end up as white elephants, expensive buildings that no one uses. Sometimes this happens because high costs and the lack of capacity to maintain machinery. Sometimes they just seem out of scale to the way people trade with fish. The technology is now available to explore lighter touches with technologies that seem more suited to the scale and way in which people live their lives. A women's group has shown that it is possible to operate small-scale enterprises based around renting out freezer space in a village. For a fraction of the cost of fishery centres, women's groups in every coastal community in this part of Solomon Islands can receive a freezer and be trained to operate a freezer committee. Three key messages emerge from our experiences so far. First, build on what people have and already do, and prioritize simple technologies that make improvements to these activities. Second, work with existing organizations. For example, existing women's savings groups and support their goals and objectives. Third, focus on local products for local markets. Oh, yeah.